Hi everyone, welcome to another design lesson video. In each video, I'm going to review some key design principles that you should keep in mind when you're thinking about renovating or decorating your space. So if you have a design dilemma and need some answers, feel free to comment in the section below with your questions. Your dilemma could become one of these design lesson videos right here. Today's topic is all about designing a bathroom using universal design principles. First off, let's clarify what universal design means. Universal design is the design of a space that can be accessed, understood, and used to the greatest extent possible by all people regardless of their age, size, ability, or disability. Essentially, we can all benefit from these principles, especially in the bathroom. Did you know that 234,000 people aged 15 and up suffer slips and falls every year in the bathroom? The bathroom is a hazardous place for young and old alike, so it's important to take steps to create an environment that is easy and safe for as many people as possible. I want you to consider these principles before you need them, because when things change, they can change quickly. So if you're planning on a bathroom renovation, you'll want to have some of these things in mind. Consider it future-proofing your bathroom. You may not even need some of these things, grab bars are the most obvious, but if you think ahead and maybe add in the structural blocking in the walls, then it's easy to modify and add these elements later on. There's so much information online about actual dimensions and requirements. A great resource is the ADA Accessibility Standards Guide, which I will link in the description below. But it's also very important to check with your local building codes. In many cases, new construction building code requirements are different than if you're renovating or altering an existing home. And the dimensions I mention here in this video may be different in your jurisdiction. And it's important to know that universal design bathrooms can still look great. So there are so many design savvy options, so there's no sacrificing the aesthetics for the safety and function that universal design requires. So let's get right into it. The first element is all about the path of travel. With building codes for architecture and interior design, this term is used a lot and it represents the path taken usually from one point to another, like an exit from a building. But in this case, we're talking about the path of travel you might take to get into your bathroom. Obviously, corridors and door openings are important, especially for people using mobility devices, walkers and wheelchairs. Check with your local building codes, but a clear path of 36 inches in width is a good place to start for residential settings. Public spaces have wider requirements. Also, having a full bathroom on the first floor of your home can be a real bonus. Not only does it allow good access for all of your guests, it could be very helpful in case you are injured and can't use the stairs. The biggest challenge in designing a bathroom with universal design principles is the overall size and space of the bathroom because of what is known as the five foot turning circle. It refers to the clear floor space required to turn around in the room if you were sitting in a wheelchair. Hugely important and easier to deal with if you're starting from scratch where you can create the space you need for your bathroom. But if you're working with an existing space and you don't have that clear diameter, including not having doors that swing into the turning circle, then you'll still want as much clear space as possible in front of key areas like the sink, toilet, and the shower to allow for mobility devices like walkers and wheelchairs. But a true universal design bathroom should have this five foot turning circle requirement. Not only are widths and clearances important, but you should consider a barrier-free experience overall. That means level changes in the floor are also key aspects of universal design. One of the key features of today's bathroom is a curbless shower. Not only does this make your bathroom feel larger and more open, it also makes it easier to keep your shower clean and makes it easier to just walk or roll right into your shower. No more tripping hazards with curbs and thresholds and perfect for aging in place design. It's the best barrier-free experience. One of the best ways to create a barrier-free bathroom is to build it like a wet room where the shower is completely open to the other fixtures in the room. It truly maximizes your space because you don't have to worry about glass shower doors that may swing into that turning circle we talked about. Also, you may want to keep a glass divider and door, but just make sure you have space to allow for the door to swing out of the shower. A door that swings into the shower can be cause for concern if someone falls inside the shower and blocks the door from swinging open. 
This is a good idea for your bathroom door as well. Have it swing out and not into the bathroom if possible. It will help you with your five foot turning circle and is much safer if someone falls against the door inside the bathroom. I think not having a glass door can be quite beneficial and can still look great. Glass dividers can be removed entirely if your circumstances change and you'd like to create that whole wet room experience. So long as you've thought ahead and sealed your bathroom floors before you tile so that you can create a watertight room. Thinking ahead. Another key aspect of wheelchair access is knee space, particularly at the sink in the bathroom. There are many ways you can design your bathroom vanity with an open space below the sink instead of cabinet storage. Wall mounted sinks are a great way to keep the space looking and feeling as open as possible. Or you can create floating sinks with your counters and cabinetry like this. Incorporating knee space into your cabinetry is a great way to get that open space while still providing you with the look of a vanity. Some even with protected pipes like this look quite nice. Knee space is a huge element in designing an accessible kitchen. If you're interested in learning more about universal design for your kitchen, let me know in the comments below. Heights are key in universal design. In fact, there's a sweet zone for anything that needs to be touched or handled when it comes to creating a bathroom that is user-friendly for all. Consider a height range not lower than 15 inches off of the floor and no higher than 48 inches above the floor. This includes everything from storage, light switches, and even towel bars or towel hooks. Light switches in particular should fall within 32 inches from the floor and no higher than 48. Countertops should not be higher than 34 inches above the floor. And we have lots of choices for toilets too. Look for comfort height toilets with a higher seat instead of a standard toilet. These taller models require less bending and pressure on the knees and they are easier to use for someone transitioning from a wheelchair. And then there's a whole category of things that make your bathroom easier to use and enjoy. Door handles should be levers versus knobs. They're much easier to use with a closed fist and are operational with downward pressure. Cabinet hardware can also make a huge difference. Decorative handles in the shape of a deep hole with large space for fingers to fit between the hardware and the cabinet make it much easier for individuals lacking dexterity in their hands. Plumbing fixtures with one single lever for mixing hot and cold water are also great because they only require one hand to operate. Bidets or toilet washlets are really practical for ease of use and a great option to include in your bathroom. In the shower, having an additional handheld shower wand on a sliding bar is essential. You can still combine this setup with a fixed shower head as well. A shower bench is a great idea for your shower as it provides additional support when bathing. Always avoid anything that could move or slide to avoid slips in a wet environment. Instead, look for a built-in bench or one that flips down but is secured to the wall. Niches offer up great accessible storage instead of shelving that can protrude into valuable space. Maybe even think about adding a bench seat outside of the shower. Having something like this could help if you can't stand for long periods of time, or it could make life easier if you're dressing or undressing yourself. Technology adds a new level of access for universal design. Digital shower controls, smart toilets, and lighting can all be controlled by smart home systems and apps, often allowing personalized settings that help users stay safe and independent. If you're liking this video, please hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more design videos. Let me know in the comments section if you're interested in universal design for your kitchen. I'm happy to get that info to you in an upcoming video. If you need personalized interior design help from me, check out my Patreon page. I've got several tiers, one of which is a one-on-one -on -one design consultation with me. Head to patreon.com slash for all the details. Grab bars are a key component to a true universal designed bathroom. Remember, most falls at home happen in the bathroom, so it's always a good idea to introduce them to your bathroom renovation. In fact, planning ahead, you should always install wooden blocking inside the walls, even if you're not planning on installing grab bars right away. Should you need them, it's much easier to install them knowing you have the support in the walls. So be strategic and think ahead. Grab bars have also been developed to look much more pleasing these days. They can come in finishes that match your plumbing fixtures. 
and many manufacturers are integrating grab bars into the accessories themselves, like this toilet paper holder with a grab bar on top. It's a good idea to have grab bars inside showers as well as bathtubs and around the toilet. There are so many types of grab bars out on the market, so it's important to spend some time and figure out which ones are best for you and your bathroom layout. And always install the blocking inside the walls. And one of the best ways to make your bathroom as safe as possible is to consider the finishes, especially the floor finish. With any wet or moisture intense environment, you'll want a flooring choice that is slip resistant. One of the best ways to do this is to choose a small mosaic tile as it requires lots of grout. This is why many shower pans are made with a small mosaic tile. The grout lines help with traction and grip and a penny tile is a great option. Larger tiles are also a good option so long as they have some texture on the surface. There are some great commercial grade tiles that are designed to be slip resistant and can be used in a residential setting. It's important to also make sure you have a good tile installer so that all the tiles, no matter what size, are installed in a level manner to avoid tripping hazards. The other thing to keep in mind is that small rugs in the bathroom could also be quite dangerous. It's a fine line. It's good to have something on the floor providing you with a landing pad outside of wet areas like the tub or shower, but you'll want the rugs to have a rubber surface on the underside so that they don't slide around. Very thin or flimsy rugs can also create a tripping hazard. Wall finishes are also important. They can provide visual cues. A horizontal feature on the walls can act as a stabilizing feature if you suffer from vertigo. This could be done with wainscoting, a chair rail, or even a tile border. High contrast finishes can also help with the visually impaired. It can help define certain areas of the bathroom like the shower area. or distinguish different levels like this black granite countertop. And finally, lighting. Lighting up your bathroom requires more than just one ceiling light. In fact, you should always have several layers of lighting in most rooms, but especially in your bathroom. Think about lighting in all directions. A ceiling light will provide down lighting into the room. This is important for general illumination and you may need more than one ceiling light depending on the size of the room. Wall sconces provide lighting at the mirror and sink. This is considered task lighting and you'll want to position the lights on either side of the mirror so it can light up your face. Longer light bars offer everyone enough light on their face no matter their age or height. You can install lighting in the shower ceiling as well. Usually this type of light is best recessed and obviously needs to be rated for a wet area. But lighting in the shower is definitely a must for safety. Cove lighting is a great way to add additional perimeter lighting. This may help in defining the space as the light washes along the walls. Another way to define the space is by integrating lighting into the vanity so that it illuminates the floor. This is great as a nightlight for everyone from kids to the elderly, and it looks amazing. So here's your takeaway. Universal design is all about making spaces safer and better for everyone. Young and old, we all benefit from a well-designed space that accommodates all our needs and that can change and adapt to our needs as well. If you're about to embark on a bathroom renovation, keeping all of these elements in mind will help you create an accessible, safe, and comfortable bathroom. And you can make it look great too. A great companion video when it comes to bathrooms is this. It's all about bathroom layout mistakes. Also great if you're about to renovate your bathroom. I'll link it below. Let me know in the comment section if you're interested in universal design for your kitchen. I'm happy to get that info to you in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching my latest design lesson video. If you like the video, please hit that like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. All of that helps to grow this channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and if you need individualized help from me, find me on Patreon. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and it could be the topic of our next video. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.